When it comes to conception via in vitro fertilization, a new innovative option is helping improve the odds of having a healthy baby. And here to talk about a cutting edge technology that tests for diseases that can cause significant health conditions is Dr. Nathan Treff, Chief Scientific Officer at Genomic Prediction. Welcome, doctor. Thank you. Thanks for being here. You know, I love talking about IVF because it's been so successful for so many families. But then there's that other side where it could be very stressful, uh, burdensome, uh, costly. It, it's, it's a tough time for families when they go through IVF. Yes, it's a difficult process to go through. One in six couples is affected by infertility. That many. So how is uh, genomic prediction easing this burden? And what we do at Genomic Prediction is we offer it a service that increases the success rate. Uh, we also offer uh, the ability to reduce uh, risk of miscarriage, which is a, a very traumatic thing to go through. All right, so let's talk about what IVF is. Just kind of summarize it for me for our viewers and uh, where your technology fits in. Well, what, what we do is we offer a series of tests available to, to, to patients, um, and, and this is a part of the overall process, which really starts by uh, the patient going through stimulation to produce eggs. Uh, those eggs are fertilized in the embryology laboratory. Uh, they're grown for five to six days, and then uh, some of the cells are removed and sent to a genetic testing lab, and that's where genomic prediction fits into the overall process. Uh, once we receive those, those cells from the, the laboratory, we then do a gamut of tests uh, to look at risk of miscarriage and uh, genetic disease. Uh, we provide the report back to the physician, and then the patient and the physician can decide which embryo to transfer in, in order to have better success. You offer pre-implantation genetic testing, or PGT, as I'm reading here. What is that? What we do is we test the embryos before a pregnancy occurs for these risks of miscarriage and genetic disease. So they have that information ahead of time to hopefully improve the outcomes as a result of, of this treatment strategy. Okay, so let's talk about the information they receive. I, I believe there's four different tests, right? Yes, we have uh, four different tests. P the first is PGTA, the second is PGTSR, the third is PGTM, and then the fourth is PGTP. All right, so let's start with PGTA. What information do uh, parents receive? What we're looking for there is, is what's called aneuploidy. It's the wrong number of chromosomes, and this is the leading cause of miscarriage. Over half of miscarriages are caused by the incorrect number of chromosomes. So we test for that uh, in addition to these other tests. The next one? Yes, with PGTSR, we're looking at what's called a structural rearrangement. And this is where two different chromosomes exchange material, and as a result of that, there's an in increased risk for miscarriage as well. So we can evaluate embryos for that particular type of disorder. And the third one? The third one is what we call PGTM, and we're looking at monogenic disorders or single gene disorders like cystic fibrosis or Huntington's disease, for example. All right, so you can actually have that information uh, before implantation where that child is at risk for, for example, cystic fibrosis. Right, it's usually in, in families that have a history or that are carriers of these types of uh, disorders and they have a risk of passing it on to their children, they can go through the process of pre-implantation genetic testing so that they can transfer an embryo that won't be affected by that disease. And then the last one I know is the exciting one, it's the PGTP. What is that one, doctor? We can test for several conditions, type 1 and type 2 diabetes, coronary artery disease, heart attack, atrial fibrillation, several types of cancer, including breast cancer, testicular cancer, and prostate cancer and several other disorders. They may make multiple embryos and then they have to decide which embryo to transfer. And instead of just looking at the embryos under the microscope and saying, this one looks nice, this one doesn't, and maybe using your gut feeling on it, we actually provide more information about the health of the embryo that they can use to improve the success of the process. Can you walk us through what we're looking at here and what's going on in the lab? What we're doing is amplifying DNA at several positions, and, and typically we look at hundreds of thousands of different locations in the genome within the embryo, and that's how we assess the risk of, of these disorders. And tell us about the polygenic risk score. So what we're doing with polygenic risk scores is taking advantage of, of this database that we have access to, and uh, we're looking at thousands and thousands of positions in the embryo itself. Uh, we then provide a risk for several of these uh, more common disorders based on that data. I think it's fascinating. Uh, for our viewers out there who might be going through in vitro fertilization or thinking of it in the future, where can they learn more about this uh, genetic testing? Genomicprediction.com. Genomicprediction.com. Doctor, thank you so much. I do appreciate your time. Thank you. And if you'd like more information on genomic prediction, you can also check out our website, and that's thebalancingact.com.